Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome back to the stage your host, Rob Callahan. <laughs> Hello again. How are we all? Did we have a good break? Yeah. Did we get the right thing? Yeah? yeah? Toilet and bar. Didn't get it mixed up, anyone? Good. <laughs> Excellent. Hello. What are you on there? Um, as I said before, I uh, bipolar. I was sectioned in 2003, I believe following the uh, untimely death of my father. He died an hour before my wedding ceremony on the wedding day. Oh. Correct response, well done. Someone's not on lithium. And, uh, you know, um, and, and unfortunately the last conversation I had with him was an argument about him not coming to the wedding. So I didn't get a chance. I mean, you know, I knew he'd said he didn't want to come and he was a stubborn man, but I thought dying was just fucking taking it a bit too far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, of course, I, I, I went over for the funeral. Um, as I didn't get a chance to say goodbye to him, I was in the church sitting there and I thought, oh, I can, there is something I can do. I can, I can carry him from the church into the hearse. That can be the last bit of journey I take him on. And so I went and asked the, uh, the, the, the funeral director. And my parents had now moved to Southend-on-Sea, so he's a bit of an East End character, this bloke. And I went over and I said, look, mate, um, can I jump in as one of the pallbearers? And he went, yeah, 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 of course, mate, of course, mate, yeah. Just jump in, copy then, copy the lads, do what I do, you'll be fine. So, now, when I was about 13, 14, I was in the ATC, the Air Training Corps. And, and every Wednesday night after school, I'd go, and we used to practice the, the, our, our slow walk for the memorial poppy parade in case we ever got asked, you know. And we'd, do, we'd have to do this fucking hours out in this playground. In this I'll be there. When the fuck's this ever going to come in handy? <laughs> We're never going to get asked. They always give it to the Oxford wankers. <laughs> there I was. Picked up my dad, put my heart under the thing, and, and the guys start off, and they and I thought, oh fuck, it did come in handy after all. <laughs> Just never fucking know, do you? <laughs> Life's strange. So I put my dad in the hearse, <sighs> stood there, back. Now I know people find it difficult what to say in death, don't we? But you think a funeral director would have had a bit of practice, right? He came over to me and he just went like Very professional job, mate. Have you done that before? <laughs> I wasn't thinking of funerals in general, I was just thinking of my dad and I thought, yeah, of course, we had a fucking station wagon in the front garden and a fruit cart. We put him in that and practice on the weekends. <laughs> All right, Dad. No, you put me down a bit fucking hard there, you fucker. You better get it right on the fucking day. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> of course, I just said no. <laughs> but, uh... What happened was, that was a year before, and I, I just got angrier with the world, got angrier with everything, because I didn't get the chance to say what I wanted to say to my dad, I suppose, and, and, and that culminated. I was doing a conference, I was a comedian and actor. I was doing this conference down in Queenstown, I'd pretty much lost the plot already anyway, and I got back to find my Graylin house in darkness. And I thought, fuck, went in, I had flatmates at this time, my wife had left. And there they were, the flat, yeah, it's a bit of a country record. Uh, the goldfish were still alive, so that was fucking good. The goldfish had been with me for five years. And um, there was my flatmate sitting around a candle, and I went, oh, fuck, another death. And I was like, is everything all right? Who's died? And I went, no, no, mate, just the power's been cut off. <laughs> oh, well, fuck it, that was it. That was the straw that broke my camel's back. And I went, all right, get out! That's it, I've had enough, fuck off, get out! Oh, well, it was 10 o'clock on a Sunday night. I went, I don't fucking care, get out! Kick them out, they're off, gone, down the road. Where are we going to go? Where are we going to go? And I said, I don't know and I don't care, but you'll find it easier than this house because they'll have some fucking lights on. <laughs> and he's cracked, he's gone. And that was it for me. And I, I was in this very suit. I stripped off most of it. I was in my box of shorts standing there and I just went, oh, bollocks, no. And I took them off as well, went out onto my front porch in my little cold de and grey linen and I went, I am Spartacus! <laughs> You're not allowed to do that. Uh, there was a little bit of me poking out over the deck, so, yeah. <laughs> Fuck off, it was a cold night. Now, um, so I got taken away. That was it that night. A psychiatric nurse lived across the road and various things had happened and they turned up at sort of half past. Open oh, up, it's the police. Fuck, they've come back to buy that ounce back. <laughs> they came in, did the old... You know, first opinion, yeah, second opinion, definitely still nuts, gone. <laughs> there I was in Tefeti Terua, in the domain there, at midnight. Um, but they didn't know that the, to Monday morning I was to start this three-month contract with, a, with a, a television company 
there, where they'd employed an actor for this role as a, as a rural motorcycle riding doctor, but he'd lied about having a motorcycle licence. So when he got the role, he went, I can't ride a bike. It's a tall, dark, handsome actor. They needed a body double. <laughs> Good, IQ. And so that was me, three months on $300 a day for standing around doing pretty much nothing except riding a motorbike. I was like, fuck, I've cracked it! But of course, there I am, eight hours in, before it in the lunatic asylum. Doctors have all gone home. I'm surrounded by eight orderlies. Now, I was pretty calm when they got to the house, but by the time I got there, I was fucking fuming. You can't do this to me! You can't do this to me! Not now! Why? Why? Calm down, mate. Calm down. Calm down. You've got to let me out of here! You've got to let me out! Why? 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 I'm going to be a stunt motorcycle rider tomorrow! <laughs> <laughs> they just fucking pat me. Of course you are. Of course you are. <laughs> Come and meet Evil Knievel, he's in room five with Jesus. Yeah, they're having a nice old chat. <laughs> so even the peop people working in the industry that need destigmatising. Um, thanks for letting me share that, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a wonderful second half. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have just as wonderful a second half for you. Please put your hands together for an excerpt from Insatiable Moon, ladies and gentlemen.